الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من يتع الرسول فقد أطاع الله ومن تولى فما أرسلناك عليهم حفيظا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا زدنا علما The ayah of the Quran that I have just recited to you in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the importance of the prophets in the lives of the ummah Look at these ayah the translation again Man yuti'a rasula the one who is obedient of the prophet the one who is obedient of the Prophet, not follow, obedient. I'll going talk about follow to today. I'll talk about love today. I'll talk about respect today. And we'll try to see how they are connected with each other. They're different pieces of the same puzzle. They're not different from each other. There is an aspect of life which is about deeds, actions. And then there's the aspect of life which is about faith, iman. <laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to connect these two pieces together as it completes our faith. Without iman and without the sweetness of iman, the everlasting effect of the deeds and the action dwindles. If you really want your actions to be strengthened, you have to give it the flavors and the sweetness of iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ يُتَعَ rasul." The one who comes in the obedience of the Prophet, فَقَدْ Indeed he is doing what? أَطَاعَ Allah. He has come in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not possible for somebody to make a claim that I am obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but disregards the Prophets. It's not possible. They're part of the same side of the equation. So if it is x plus y equals to z, x plus y equals to z, you cannot take x out of the equation, then it's going to be y equals to z. We're going to falsify the equation. So, مَنْ يُتِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ The one who decides to leave the Prophet, the one who decides not to follow the Prophet, so, O oh Prophet, فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا You're not guardian over them. You're not responsible that if they don't follow you, your job is to deliver the message. You're the messenger. You're the prophet. لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ There is no forcing in the religion. You don't force anybody. Your job is to deliver the message. Now think about it, this idea of delivering the message is not new. It's very old. It was in that manual instruction sets given to Adam alayhi salam when he was sent down on the planet earth. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam? فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ When the guidance comes to you from me, فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰ Whoever follows that guidance, لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ That person does, will not have to feel sorry. Now notice these words. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ From me. Where do the messengers and the prophets come? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the source of guidance. They are the one to be followed to gain guidance. So فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰ Whoever follows the guidance. Who is the guidance bearer? The prophet. Who is the guidance bearer? The messenger. So whoever follows them... What will be their status? فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ They are the people that they would not have to worry about on the day of judgment when they come in front of me. Now let's look at another ayah. Because sometimes when you ask questions, 
See if the Qur'an has the answer for those questions. And Qur'an has a lot of answers to a lot of questions that the humanity has. Look at this question. Why prophets are sent? Why? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have been given me a book. I could have opened the book. Read from the book. A lot of the people claim that, right? These days. Oh, the book is out there. I'll just pick up the book and read it and be guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ Then when the prophets are set to this planet earth, إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ They are sent over here so that you are obedient to them. You come in obedience and they come over here بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If tomorrow somebody gets up and says, I'm the prophet, no. Bi'ibnillah. So prophethood, the chapter is closed. Khatamun Nabiyin. That's it. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one we have to follow. Now comes another question. Why should I obey the Prophet? What is it? See, a lot of the time what happens is when you make a sales deal, I'm talking about the relationship that we have in these times. You basically ask, what is in it for me? Why should I go this way? And then different people come and give you different things. And then you make a choice. The best of the best choice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm giving you a best choice and I'll tell you the reason. Because the guy I sent to you as a prophet, I've told him in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are the one who has the highest moral values. You are the one who is at the highest moral values. Humanity has never seen these values before. Let me give you an example. In this time, how much an enemy will trust a, an individual or a group of individuals that that person or the group of individuals consider as their enemies? They wouldn't trust them. They wouldn't trust them with nothing. Yet the people of the Makkah, despite the fact that they were the enemies of the Prophet, they would call him names, they tried to kill him. Yet they called him as Al-Amin, the trustworthy, and the truthful. And the night, they plot his murder. They were guarding his house, so that as soon as he comes out, they will kill him. On that night, when he was about to leave, he said to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali, you sleep in my bed. You take my blanket. They will assume that I'm still asleep. And you know what? When you wake up in the morning, these are the belongings of the people of the Makkah, the kuffar, who have trusted me with their belongings. So when they come, you give these belongings to them, and then you leave. They are considering him their enemy, yet they know that there is nobody better than him. There is none better than him. So this is the moral values Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings in the Qur'an and says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O believers, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ in you, for in the life of the Prophet, in the soul of the Prophet, for you, you will find all patterns of life. Uswatun hasana. Doesn't matter what you're going through, you will find the answer in his life. Because what he went through, none of you can imagine going through. It was only he that I created the way that he could go through all that he went through. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us over and over and over again in different places in the Qur'an that these are the prophets to be followed. And the Prophet himself says, now this is one of the beautiful hadith that comes from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There, of course, all his sayings are beautiful. But this puts together the two ideas I've brought to you. Follow and obedience. Now the hadith starts out with this word, sallu, pray, order. You got to pray, that's obedience. And then look at the next verse, it says, the next piece, it says, كَمَا يُصَلِّي As you have seen me pray, that follow. That's the difference. 
There's an ordering that you have to do, but then how should you carry the order is only through following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So in the life of the Prophet, there are examples, after examples, after examples, that you cannot even imagine and understand at times and you have to look through the pages in the books to see what exactly does it mean. One of the ideas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forth when He sends prophets is, why this whole religion system? Why? That's another question we ask. Why do I have a religion? So that, as a humanity, we are disciplined. It is a disciplining system. That's why when the prophets were came, they came as teachers. They came as teachers. The job of the teacher is to lead with example. They taught. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ They taught the book and the wisdom. They taught. They were teachers. So they taught us discipline. And the discipline is something very, very important. Something. Take an example of this masjid. We gather here every Jummah. We come here and we pray. Yes, there is a discipline. But there are a few things to look at that we do not follow, which is discipline. For example, how often do we care about, we care about the tahara, the cleanliness of myself. How about the cleanliness of the other people who are praying around me? Let me give you an example. We take a wudu there. We don't clean our feet. means we don't dry them. We come on the carpet with wet foot. And wetness damps the carpet. And when carpet get damp, things grow in. Now where I'm putting my footstep, my wet footstep, I came all the way over there till here. Now somebody will now going to come and do sajda at the same spot. What is he inhaling? Over the period of time, what is he inhaling? Now some people have fungus in their fingernails. They don't know that. They have now infected, infested that place. So we are not living in the time where there were tiles and there were stones. So we have to think about what is the right of others and me too. Now people walk into the masjid, they look for their friends. They go to their friends and then they say, Assalamu alaikum to their friends while the khutbah is going. They disturb that person. They disturb everybody around him. They create noise pollution. If everybody starts doing this, the person who is speaking, who is he speaking to? This is a disrespect to everybody around that you disturb. This is not a meet and greet session. You come here, you look for a spot, you sit down. You can meet and greet afterwards. Nobody should say that, why did you not say assalamu alaikum to me when you sat next to me? Because the khutbah was going on. Think about it, a person over here is reciting the ayah of the Holy Qur'an and we're talking. And what does the Qur'an say? When the Qur'an is recited, be quiet. So what are we doing? Justice or injustice? Many things like that we do every day, every time. And things to be avoided. When we are praying, when we are done with praying sunnah, we start talking in here. Loud. Well, everybody else is still praying. We can still talk outside. Why should I disturb the prayers of the other people? I'm done praying, but they're not. There are people who after saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, when they're done with the salah, they start doing zikr. But the other people are of the point of view that after salam, I must shake hands with both sides. You don't have to. So the person is saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, and a hand comes in between. Assalamu alaikum. And the whole rhythm is broken. I was like, I'm doing zikr. I could meet with you afterwards. So you have to be cautious about these little things. There is something that is your right on yourself. You do. You're right. But be careful about the rights of the other individuals. So the religion has come to give us a discipline. So its idea is to execute the discipline to maintain the harmony. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم